we were talking before the broadcast about heart disease is the leading cause of death in the United States. And in thinking about how heart disease, it maybe often develops over time, right? Uh, maybe people might have early signs or symptoms long before they have serious heart problems, or maybe they don't realize that they're developing heart disease. And so many people like Dr. Tayer, because I have his book, who's a physician, think it won't happen to me. A physician that thinks it won't happen to me. Wow. Well, I'm so glad you're here today, Dr. Tayer, to share your story, because your story talks about the adversity and the challenges that you faced as a heart disease survivor. Yes, as a heart disease survivor. And you're going to talk to us about that and also what we can do about it, which is going to be very interesting. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, before I begin, let me just stay, state that heart disease starts at the age of 8 or 10. Atherosclerosis starts at the age of 8 to 10. And it is better to catch them young. Uh, that's number one. Number two is, like I was telling uh, Amy, I wear three different hats. Apart from being a physician, I'm a research and physician who believes in preventing and treating the cause of the disease rather than the consequence once it has happened. Number two, I wear a hat like you pointed out. I am a heart disease survivor. So I know what heart disease patients are going through and I've been in their shoes. And number three is I am a septuagenarian athlete, endurance athlete. And I would like to tell people, I wish the young athletes would start the uh, plant-based diet at a younger age so that their recovery after an event is far shorter, that the training is not lost. And these ones are the ones which have, which will, who will have longevity in their sports fields so that by the time they reach the middle age, they're still raring to go as opposed to meat-based athlete, uh, athletes who will do well, but by the time they reach 50s and 60s, they will have their hip problems, their knee problems, their back problems, but not the ones because the recovery rate is immense with a plant-based. So these are my three fundamental things that are very important. Uh, to continue my story, I have to state this uh, very emphatically, that heart disease is number one killer, the leading cause of death in the world, as well as in the US, for 105 years in a row. And what we need to do is, we all need to do a very simple thing is to go on a plant-based whole food diet, a simple way to actually treat the cause or even reverse chronic diseases, including heart disease. Now, my story, I'm a physician. I came to America rather late. I, and I had a lot of catching up to do. So I used to work long, hard hours, paying very little attention to my health, to my family and friends. I also spent a long, t a long time in eating unhealthy foods uh, without worrying about what effect it would have on my body. And when I was not in front of food and eating food or working hard, I was a couch potato. I did not know the meaning of exercise. Probably the only exercise I did was lying on the couch using my hand muscles to use the remote to change the TV channels. Can you imagine a person who's working hard, 
who is they have absolutely no idea being a seafood eater, S-E-E. I ate everything in sight. And then being a couch potato. So this, also I had a type A personality. Everything had to be under my control. It was either my way or the highway. This created a lot of stress in my life. Stress everybody has. But how to handle stress? I couldn't handle it. It was chronic stress. So I was not surprised that heart disease came knocking at a very young age of 56. Now, two of my arteries were 98 to 99% blocked. Two important things I want, you, I want to mention over here. One, my plaques were extremely hard. And they had to use a diamond tip drill to shave off the plaques. And in the process, I got a cardiac arrest. My heart stopped. Mm. And they just shocked me to get my heart beating again. This may shock you, but the worst part of this is, you know what? The, the cardiologist who saved my life, who did this, was young, 52 years old. Two years after putting my stents, he died of a massive heart attack on the treadmill. So it is getting the younger folk too. Heart disease. I, I hardly heard anybody having diabetes or high blood pressure before the age of 35, 40. Now I'm getting 20-year-olds with heart disease and diabetes. Something has to happen and it has to happen now. So when I got my stents, well, I thought now I would change my life, you know, but no, I did not. I continued my same indiscriminate life that I was leading, unhealthy life. I sort of figured that why I'm supposed to be a physician, not a patient. So I started slowly withdrawing from life and that created a lot of negative thoughts and behaviors that led into depression, that led into anxiety, that led into uh, sinus infections and bronchitis and pneumonia visited me every year. And I was in terrible shape at that time. And then came the diverticulitis. And it put me in the hospital with perforations, twice. And now picture this, the surgeon, my friend, is standing over me in the surgery room, in the operating room and telling me, Akhil, if I do not do surgery on you right now, you may not survive. So with this, I did, this continued for five long years till I was back, back in the hospital, this time for an open heart surgery because my stents had failed. Mark my words, I will do a half marathon in a year's time if all goes well. This is what I told the ICU nurses. I don't know why I said that <laughs> at that time. But and they smiled, they laughed, they humored me and I don't blame them. But looking back now, I think that that was a moment when I realized I had only two options left. Either to continue this horrific end of life journey or to make a conscious decision to really live my life again with passion, purpose, and positivity. So I, my recovery was remarkable. I was on the treadmill for third day. Suddenly things changed. I didn't take any pain medications. I was happier in this physical pain than in the mental agony of the last five years. So I took up running. This couch potato takes up running who had not even done one kilometer in his life. It was like a baby learning how to walk. Little shuffle or walk and then a jog and then run. I loved running. It was for me, this is a word that I have coined, it was meditation in motion. I like running alone. 
to smell the flowers and the hear the birds chirping. So I took up running. And seven months after my open heart surgery, my wife and I went over to Nashville and there was a dichotomy of fear and excitement, but I finished my half marathon in four grueling hours, but my bruised heart had not let me down, cross the finish line. This was when everything changes. So the mistakes I made were big mistakes. I paid a price. I got out of it. And here I am sitting in front of you and telling you the story that don't make the mistakes I made. Benefit from them. Yes, it is an amazing story. And I think that there are so many people who like you. And, and that's the thing. I mean, here you are a physician and you were saying, ah, oh, it's not going to happen to me. And you got, they have that old joke about somebody who was, their home was flooding and they had to keep climbing up until they were on the roof. And at first, you know, the police officer came, oh, we're evacuating, it's flooding, you have to get in the car. Oh, no, 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 I'm okay, I'm okay. And then the water kept rising, and then a boat came, and, and they said, get on the boat. You, no, 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 I'm okay. And then the guy was up on the roof, and, and a helicopter came, and he's like, no, I'm okay, I'm okay. And then, of course, he wasn't okay. And then when he met his maker, they he, he said, why didn't you save me? And he said, well... I sent you a car, I sent you a boat, I sent you a helicopter, <laughs> you know, you should have got on. So you had all these different signs and warnings, right? To absolutely. And, and you're a absolutely. physician, right? So, and, and that makes you human. That's, that's very true. Uh, and I, uh, I wish uh, this uh, goes far and wide that uh, we have to work together on this. And there are so many things. And why did I turn into a plant base? When did I turn? And what happened to me? So that would be my next uh, part of my explanation. Because even though I ran my first half marathon, I was a flexitarian. Means I'd cut back on meat, eggs, and dairy. But I was not plant-based. So, and then I thought to myself that I've had a heart surgery, I've had stents, and I don't want this to happen again. So out of the blue, a friend of mine told me, have you read Reversing of Heart Disease by Dean Ornish? And I said, no. And I read that book. When I read that book, I realized that nutrition is an extremely important part in one's health. Food either feeds disease or fights disease. So I started researching on ways how to heal the body without solely relying on medication and invasive surgery. So I started reading books by Michael Greger and T. Collins and Neil Bernard and all the other uh, researchers and uh, uh, experts in the fields, field of lifestyle medicine. And the more I read, the more I realized there's something here. It's nutrition. And that is when I started changing my life into a plant-based food, uh, whole food plant-based diet. And then I wrote a book, Open Heart, where the seventh chapter deals with why exercise, why diet is more important than exercise. So that is how I came across that. But, um, you know, uh, we have, when I, when I was doing this, I came upon the six pillars of lifestyle medicine. And I challenge you that if people have nothing right and say they have aches and pains, they will get benefit if you follow the six pillars of lifestyle medicine, which I'll talk about. If you have nothing wrong with you right now, and if you follow the six pillars of lifestyle medicine, 
your life will change. You will see the difference. And so I started doing the lifestyle medicine. But in the meantime, if you want to ask me any other question, I'm okay or I can continue. Yeah, uh, sure. I well, I, gu okay. I guess we, could, we can try to, we, you talked about um, the, the whole food plant-based lifestyle. So we can start our true or false game because we have a question about that. So Green Warriors, let's mm -hmm. start. It's time for True or False on Be Green with Amy Live. Answer true or false to Amy's questions in the comments below, and Amy will ask our guest for the expert answer. Okay, Green Warriors, true or false? A whole food plant-based vegan diet is expensive. So Dr. Taylor had adopted this lifestyle, and maybe some of you who have not tried it or thinking about it and maybe you're thinking maybe it's expensive so what do you think green warriors true or false dr tayer what do you have to say about that i think that it is false a whole food plant-based vegan diet is not expensive at all if done properly you see uh it's not a fad vegan diet is not a fad it is here to stay it is health promoting, it is environmentally sustainable, and is an alignment with everybody's morals, moral code. Now, concentrate on the five items. You have your vegetables, your fruits, your uh, whole grains, and your nuts and beans and legumes and beans and, and nuts and seeds. If you concentrate on these, Having in your plate, the rainbow plate, as we call it, fruits and vegetables, half of it, uh, proteins, the whole grains and legumes and beans, one fourth. And then your one fourth, the uh, starches, your uh, carbohydrates. Now, buy everything in bulk. You see your whole grains, uh, buy it in, in bulk. And then you start making your soups, your pastas and your... Uh, other dishes for a week and then pair it off with your brown rice, your quinoa, your amaranth, your maize, or whatever, whatever you have, that pair it off. So if you buy in bulk, you're not go you're gonna save your a lot of money. And then do not go in for processed foods in the uh, supermarket because those are not only unhealthy, but they're extremely expensive. So I would not go for any frozen vegan products, no fake meats, very expensive. And your, uh, so then you go on a trip, even in a car on a long trip, carry some unsalted almonds or pistachios or things like that, as opposed to stopping at a gas station and buying a bag of chips. Have you ever been to a restaurant? A vegan entree is always cheaper than the other entree. I challenge you that. Go any restaurant and you'll find out. So, and finally, we had the first lady once say this. Why, if you have a home, I did this in COVID. If you have a house, you're bound to have a backyard. No matter how small. I don't have a big backyard. Grow your vegetables. You don't really require much. Once a week to look after it, come on. So you get organic, whole food vegetables right from your garden. Right now, I've got bell pepper. I've got uh, zucchini. I've got cucumbers. I've got um, uh, tomatoes of different varieties. So I've got a lot of things going on. But I had to learn. I didn't know ABC about this. So bottom line is no. It is not expensive, and I am saving a lot of money doing this rather than buying uh, meat, eggs, and dairy. Yes, absolutely. And if you and if you happen to live in a condo or an apartment, you can still grow things on your windowsill indoors, and you can sprout. Right, you can do seed sprouting. So, and those yes. are very very healthy sprouting very seeds. Yeah, so right. there's always right. something. You can have a little herb garden in some small pots. So it's it's always a way to do that. 
Yes, I have basil. I've got mint growing right now. But uh, those are my wife's things. Mine is a vegetable garden. We always have a fight between this, you know. So <laughs> that is oh, a, uh, well, for the space, you mean? Yes, yes. <laughs> and her parts come in my way and my, okay. So, <laughs> but <laughs> we enjoy this, a healthy fight. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I mean, that's yes. wonderful. And and gardening is there's advantages to it also not just for the saving of the money right there's other advantages to gardening. Oh yes, oh yes, it's sunshine vitamin. Your sunshine vitamin that you get from the sun, the vitamin D, remains in your body twice as much longer as a supplement vitamin D. See, vitamin D is extremely important for plant-based diet or even for the plant-based diet or even for people who are not on a plant-based diet. It is not calcium that is that important. The dairy industry has made us think we should have one gram, 1.5 grams of calcium. No, all you require is 600, 700 milligrams of calcium and that you can easily get from whole leafy vegetables like your bok choy or your uh, spinach or your kale or your nuts like your, uh, you know, your pumpkin seeds or your nuts like your pistachios or almonds. You get enough calcium. Vitamin D helps in the absorption, absorption of calcium. And therefore, it helps in the bone structure so that you don't get osteoporosis, osteopenia. And you do not end up having hip fractures, which is a billion dollar uh, mm. thing to the taxpayers. So the idea is that vitamin D, sunshine, but remember not through a window pane. The ultraviolet rays do not go through the window pane. And trust me, even before the COVID, 60% of the nursing home patients were vitamin D deficient. For the first two months, I did telemedicine and did not do anything but sit at home. I got my vitamin D tested. Vitamin D was three. It is supposed mm -hmm. to be 30 to 100. Mm -hmm. So it is extremely important. And another thing, when COVID was going on, there was a small study done on vitamin D, very small study. There were 50 uh, patients, that 50 people were taken, 25 were uh, severe enough. They all had COVID, severe enough to be admitted in the hospital. In the hospital, that time we had those ventilator problems. Remember those days? Mm -hmm. So we had to put them on ventilators. So the idea was these were 50 people and 25 were given high doses of vitamin D, 50,000 units a day, while the others were not given. The people who were not given vitamin D, seven landed upon ventilators. People who were given vitamin D, only one landed upon a ventilator. Mm -hmm. And recent research of Michael Greger, I think I saw this. I read this two days back that it helps in colorectal cancer as well as in uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, bronchitis, chronic. Mm. Yeah, you're right. And even where I am in Florida, I, I know a physician and she said that even in Florida, the sunshine state where people are bound to be getting sunshine all the time, most of her patients are low and many are deficient. So yes, you're right on. And then along with that, which something I'm fascinated with is the infrared absorption of the infrared light and how important that is and that they're discovering things about that. And even if you're in the shade, it'll get to you by reflecting off of the green leaves and things that are out there. So it's, it's, there's so much more to learn. And that's what's Correct. really great, right? We're still we're still Correct. on the on the verge of knowing, but you but you've got all this knowledge that you've accumulated because you read the books, and 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 I think it's wonderful because as a physician, a lot of times you know you've learned so many things. What else is there to learn? But you were open minded about it, and you were willing to to take that leap and and try things. 
So how how uh, how did that work out with your your family when you decided to adopt the lifestyle? What happened? You see, I I turned around and said that uh, I turned a whole food plant base due to health reasons. My oh. wife and daughter were vegetarians forty years back oh. because of animal cruelty. Yeah. So. Obviously, it was easier for them to follow my path, but it was difficult for me to follow. A reason being that, and, and trust me, this is so true, that when you are actually, uh, when you are trying to change as an adult, it is doable, but it is very difficult because you know what? Your brain comes in the way. It's an emotional pull to certain types of foods which are related to happiness, to related to belonging, related to pleasure. These are from the subcortical. So that means you are under the weather or say you are not feeling too good or you had a bad day at the office. You crave for the comfort foods, these foods, which your mom you know, made for you at that time, not knowing, but those are the comfort foods you crave for. And if you don't get those comfort foods, what happens? Your brainstem immediately sends signals and you get angry, you get irritated. So you are saying, why, why am I not getting it? So it is difficult as an adult, but it is doable. People are doing it. So what is the greatest answer on this? Catch them young. Mm. And catch them young as children, because in children, do not give them a, a, a threat or get angry or give and, and, and tell them that if you finish your cereal, I will give you an ice cream. No, because you are telling, you are asking that person and giving the thing which you don't want that person to have in the first place, ice cream. So the moment the child gets older, he has got it in his mind. That's the thing I want. So instead of doing that, of, you know, bribing a child and getting angry or telling things, no, you've got to finish it. Let them come in the kitchen. Let them participate in chopping the vegetables, making sauces. And most kids, even adults, eat with their eyes. So make a clown face. Make something like a broccoli uh, woods where the carrots are going hunting or something, you know, around to that. They all love this play. That is how you're going to change them. And that is how they're going to like it. But be prepared. You have to expose a person 15 times before gets used to it. So you will get a lot of spinach and kale thrown back at you. But it will work. So my point is really catch them young. Well, that's wonderful. That's it's so important, so true. So you adopted the lifestyle. It was easier for your family because they were kind of vegetarian anyway. So how long did it take you before you felt anything different in in your health or or anything? You see, what happened was, uh, Amy was that I first became a flexitarian, cutting back on meat, eggs, and dairy. Then I started giving up each item. Like, for example, the first thing anybody should do, even if they want to go plant-based, is to give up dairy. You'll get immediate results. All your congestion, your allergies, all that will immediately improve. And I was lactose intolerant anyway, so I, it was easy for me to give up dairy. Then I started giving up uh, after dairy was that I gave up eggs. After eggs, I gave up meats, but I stuck to fish. It took mm -hmm. me a long time to give up fish. Fish was my the thing that I could not give up. A lot of people cannot give up cheese yeah. because if the casomorphine the casein that turns into casomorphin and becomes addictive. So my patients will come and say, when I call them next, did you give up your uh, dairy? Of course, doc, I don't drink any milk. What about cheese? Oh, no, I have my cheese. 
and they say my cheese, right? That's exactly yeah. how they'll say it, my cheese. My cheese. So that was the thing. And then I slowly gave up uh, ultimately everything, but I made a point. I like, I love burgers. So I started doing uh, jackfruit burgers, which is a great taste, or a mushroom burger, which has got the earthy taste of the meat with a spinach. This thing. I can make you minced uh, soy. It is exactly like minced meat. I had a few couples who came to me on New Year's Eve, and I they were half of them were non-veg. So I said, okay, I'll make you uh, scrambled eggs. And I made scrambled tofu. They did not realize it. And then after I told them, one person at the audacity to turn around and say, oh, now it doesn't taste that good. Mm. <laughs> it's in the it's all in the mind. It is. So, so, so I, we, we, I do that. I don't use sugars. So mm -hmm. I use raisin, dates, uh, and uh, bananas. So all these are my regular sugars that I make smoothies. I also do a great vegetable drink every single morning for the last 15 years I've been doing it. And putting in your uh, turmeric, your ginger, your chia seeds, and your Indian gooseberry powder. Amla. Yep. So Dr. I, Gregor I, talks I, about that too. <laughs> <laughs> and then I sort of got better at it. And then I realized, wow, the mental clarity, being more compassionate. Now I could understand my wife and daughter, why they'd given up because of animal rights. I started becoming more cognizant of the fact the environmental reasons, the greenhouse gases that we burn. So I got more into it and I became more compassionate with my patients. I listened more. So these were all the effects. But the biggest effect was that my preparation time in sports, my performance time, and my recovery time all, all reduced tremendously. So here is what I would like to tell you. I, was, I did a 100-kilometer bike ride, and this is a true story, 100-kilometer bike ride on a meat diet. So when I finished the race, I came home and, and had a huge piece of chicken with a lot of French fries and a big soda and all that. And I was in bed for five days. Recovery, not good. I did a 100-mile bike ride. And this was in Alabama, in Mobile, with my trainer. She and I did this. And we were now vegans. So I was a whole food plant-based diet. I took a whole food plant-based diet prior and after. And then I had to drive back to my hometown, Gadsden, a small little place in Alabama near Birmingham. As I was driving, I get a call from the hospital saying that we need you, doc. There's no doctor working tomorrow. So I said, okay, I'll be there. So here it is. It took me nine and a half hours because there were gale force winds for a 100-mile bike ride. Some odd oddity that year. So it took me nine and a half hours, six hours of drive, 10 hours of next day shift without batting an eye. The power of plants. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. So this is why, and we can explain uh, to the your listeners why, why this plant base helps athletes. So. Yes, let's let's go with our next true or false question. Oh, okay. True or false? Sure. An athlete can compete at the highest level by adopting a plant-based diet. What do you think, Green Warriors? True or false? Okay, go ahead. Okay, Dr. it is absolutely one hundred percent true. An athlete can compete at the highest level by adopting a uh, plant-based diet. It, it, it is not only true, it is, you see, you must understand one thing. Uh, I think the people should watch Game Changers. Mm, yes. And what does a Game Changers say? You've got all this Jurek and uh, uh, 
this uh, Williams sisters and uh, the tennis player, uh, what's his name? Uh, I can't get his name now, but um, he and all these extreme athletes, ultra marathoners and all that were doing it on a plant based diet. Now, imagine if you take, say, for example, we are not a plant based and you take a ham sandwich, which is of cheese and mayo and all that, and you eat that sandwich. What is really happening? Your, your muscles for the activity requires oxygenated blood. And your food acts on the endothelium to produce nitric oxide, which dilates the arteries, makes the blood flow smoothly into the arteries. Once you don't have that with this food that you've eaten, the blood becomes sluggish. It cannot move properly. You're not carrying oxygen enough to the muscles. So you are at a disadvantage to start with at the race. And the moment you start doing this race, you are panting and you are puffing and you're doing it. After the race, what happens? You go to the tent and you have a pizza and you have a burger and you have a drink. Now what are you doing? You're putting actually fuel on fire. So right now, then your recovery is not there. So what happens? You lie in bed for hours together or days as opposed to having a nice whole grain pasta or what legumes and beans prior to that. And after that, having a nice uh, drink of fruits and vegetables and all that and having a, again, a uh, uh, whole food plant-based vegetable diet, your blood is moving. Your muscle is getting everything. And so you are not going to get tired. So you are going to be absolutely, your recovery rate is very high. That's what I said. Even people like Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, Clark Lewis, all these uh, are plant-based people. And they will go a long time. So you can compete. I, I remember doing my uh, Mount Kilimanjaro and they, they fed us under this thing. And it was very difficult not to it's, go in. This for, wasn't when you were 30, correct? No, when no, you, no. When you climb, <laughs> tell everybody. <laughs> I, was, I was 66 when I climbed my Mount Kilimanjaro. I, I climbed a 19,000 uh, feet uh, Mount Kailash in Tibet, China, uh, one year after my open heart surgery. Seven months I did half marathon, one year after that, four months after that I did my Kailash. So, so everything is doable. I mean, this is a classic question. Can compete at the highest level? Yes, you can. And especially younger athletes, listen to me, please. You have to get, otherwise you will get insulin problems and yeah. all diabetics and everything will work. Why did that young person who, uh, the cardiologist who worked on me, died at the age of 52? Maybe because of his diet. And he thought that he was living healthy because he was on a treadmill, right? No. So he, but right? He thought, the, he thought he could exercise away the bad diet. So if you let me, let me explain one other thing to your listeners. You see, it is not only the quality of life, it is also longevity. Because see, think about your, your uh, DNA. It is all packed together like chromosomes. And these chromosomes have at the ends what are called telomeres. It is like your shoelace at the top that you have that little thing. Now, this telomeres shorten and shorten as your cells divide, as you grow older. And once your cells stop dividing, your telomeres are gone and you die. What happens with a plant-based diet? That if you, if you use a plant-based diet, the shortening of the telomeres does not take that fast. And in some cases, the telomeres start lengthening. 
This is not an ordinary thing because Dr. Blackburn, Elizabeth Blackburn, got a Nobel Prize for the telomerase enzyme. And therefore, it, it was thought that if you put a person three months on a whole food plant-based diet, your telomeres doesn't go shorten that fast as uh, people on meat diets. And then you had a study which showed that uh, there were uh, people who were put on uh, extreme activity uh, exercise and a re very restricted calorie diet. They all lost weight and felt good, but their telomeres did not improve. Their telomeres did not go. That is because of the diet. But if, if a concoction of uh, bananas, I believe, and it was uh, tofu, uh, uh, garbanzo beans, and uh, peanuts. A, con a concoction of that was given to emaciated children and the gut bacteria started improving. So it is not your exercise and calorie restricted, it is your diet. Right. You can't outrun a bad diet. You cannot outrun a bad diet. You can you can do a five kilometers and spend mm -hmm. 350 calories. But you go to McDonald's, a French fries and a big burger, you're taking in 500 calories. Uh, uh, you know, so there is no sense in us fighting over this. It is a diet. And, mm -hmm. and I found out I, I stuck to my diet because I saw the benefits. A lot of people will come and tell me nothing is wrong with me, doc. Why should I change? I'm healthy as a horse. And to them, I tell them, it's a silent killer, the heart disease. Diabetes is silent. It'll come on to you when you reach 40s and 30s and 35s. Don't take that chance. Then you will say, oh, doc, now I want to listen to you. What diet? Listen now. Mm -hmm. We are experts at treating the cause. We love, we doctors, I'm sorry to say this, but we are great at acute disease, heart attack, this, that, or somebody who's having pneumonias. We do a lot of good work. But for chronic diseases, we are moppers. Yeah. over sink overflowing sink, we are mopping, band-aid, just turn off the faucet, get the diet. Yep, you're absolutely right. And you were talking about the movie Game Changers, and if people haven't seen it, it is a really great movie, especially if uh, for a man to see, or if you have a man that you wanted to see him learn about this lifestyle, and because it has a lot of athletes in it. And they talked about a lot of things in the movie. And, and so I wanted to segue into this true or false question. True or false, ED stands for erectile dysfunction. Okay, Green Warriors, it's a little bit of a trick question. But what do you say? True or false? Okay. <laughs> Talk to Terry. Tell us. I have a middle of the road answer. I believe that ED can be endothelial dysfunction in the inner lining of your arteries, and it can be erectile dysfunction. But if your endothelial dysfunction is there, you're not producing enough nitric oxide, you are going to get that other ED erectile dysfunction. Because your arteries get constricted. And remember one thing, Erectile dysfunction is when you uh, either cannot get an erection or cannot maintain an erection to have a successful sexual course. So the idea is that penile arteries are tinier and smaller than the coronary arteries. So in so many ways, it is a warning sign if somebody who is having erectile dysfunction and is 40, 45, 50, he should be evaluated for a coronary artery disease. Especially if the person has got high blood pressure, smoker or diabetes, and he has got erectile dysfunction, straight away, get a stress test done. Right, so that, that would be the canary in the coal mine. 
for You're right. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 uh, th there are foods. I mean, this was a Harvard study done now. I don't remember exactly, but they took uh, this observational study, which they took a lot of people and uh, uh, students, and they took into consideration that the diets, which was of course uh, the really uh, the American diet, the, uh, the you know standard American diet with the smoking and all that, and they took into consideration. And when they finally started finding out, they found thirty-eight percent of them, the diet they were using, had erectile dysfunction. Then these are students. So that was a Harvard observational study. I mean, there's nothing uh, double-blinded or, but it is it is an eye opener. It is an eye opener, and and uh, plant-based. Food also has a tremendous thing on uh, on COVID too. You, you you heard about it that uh, a study which was done by the Massachusetts General Hospital, which is an arm of Harvard, uh, they did a study and they found that uh, being on uh, whole food, the people were on a whole food plant based diet as opposed to a meat diet were. 73% less chance of getting uh, COVID, severe COVID or moderate severe COVID. And what they found is why? Because see, the plant-based diet is what your gut bacteria feed on. And once your gut bacteria is healthy, then your immunity is great. So you don't get the COVID. Another study, 3,000 uh, health workers Nurses from uh, nurses and doctors from six countries, they were given for a very uh, whole food plant based diet versus a keto diet, very very uh, high in um, low in starch, uh, carbohydrates were very high in meats, and what they found was there was a tremendous difference. The keto diet was uh, about. They said about 365% more chances of getting COVID as opposed to the plant-based diet. Right. And this is not just COVID that, we're, that we can talk about as far as yes. your immunity. Correct. Correct. But uh, it, it, so many times people take vaccinations that do the right things. But if the immunity is not there, they, are, they may suffer, you know. Yes, absolutely. So you, we were talking about the, the symptoms of heart disease. So let's ask this true or false question, and you can help us to understand. Primorius, true or false? It's important to know the difference between a heart attack and angina. And for those that don't know what angina is, maybe you can explain that first and then talk about that. Okay. Go ahead, Dr. Ter. Tell us your answer. Okay. Now... You see, if you just do a cross-section, picture in your mind a coronary artery. The inner lining is endothelium, the innermost lining. That endothelium it, it protects the arterial wall so that it doesn't get stiffened up and cause high blood pressure. It also keeps the blood flowing smoothly in the lumen because it does not allow any atherosclerosis. The moment you eat a diet, which is unhealthy, meat, eggs, dairy, uh, processed foods, sugars, you destroy the endothelium. And once your endothelium is destroyed, the culprits in the back, like your fibrin, your calcium, your cholesterol, now come in and start forming plaques. But in some cases, these plaques take years, decades to form. And they're extremely thick, unlikely to break. So, but when they keep narrowing the artery till you start getting chest pain, when the artery is so narrowed and you get chest pain on exertion, that is what we doctors call as angina. But mark what I said, very, very unlikely to break and cause a heart attack. So let me make a profound statement over here. Had I known then 
what I know and understand today, I would have looked at other options rather than get stents or surgery. Now, look at heart attack. This is small friable clots that can break, form a clot, emboli, go in, stick in one part of the heart. That part of the heart dies. This is a calamity. This is a heart attack, a typical Hollywood or what you call the Bollywood type of a heart attack, clutching your chest and falling on the ground. This is an emergency. For this, you require to go to the emergency room. They do your test, blood test. They do your EKG. They find that you are having a heart attack. They take you up to take you up to the cath lab, and boom, boom, boom. They get the clots off. They uh, then do put stents, or if that fails, they do surgery. But what did I have? I had plaques which were very thick, 98 to 99%. They were unlikely to break. Unlike my partners, both of them had heart attacks, but not, they had only 50% of blockages. So my idea is that don't turn around and make your own diagnosis and say, I'm having angina. Go over to the emergency room. If your test, your blood test, your troponin test and all that are negative, then think about the other options. Think about going someplace and finding out about whole food plant-based diet. I think Stanford, who is that doctor? Again, I miss out his name. He said that 50% of stents and bypass surgeries done in the United States are unnecessary. So yeah, this, is, yeah. this is amazing. I mean, it, it's mind-blowing that we do so much of surgeries when or stents when it is not required, you know. So we come, and I would like to talk a little bit about chronic diseases because it all comes with heart disease. And they're all hand in hand. Strokes, heart disease, certain cancers, diabetes, high cholesterol, blood pressure. They all are certain and the same this thing. So what do they have in common? Why do we say that if we use whole food plant-based diet or the six pillars of lifestyle medicine? Oh, I forgot to talk about the six pillars of lifestyle medicine. See, the six pillars of lifestyle medicine, is number one is nutrition and we have talked about it. Number two is exercise. Your exercise has very many effects. Your exercise can build up your endorphins to be, feel good. Your exercise can increase your good cholesterol. Your exercise can decrease your blood pressure by 10 points. And your exercise can also decrease your heart rate so that your heart has to do less work and your blood can take out more oxygen from the blood with the heart working less. So there's a tremendous thing about exercise too. Now what they say is, recent studies have been done, which say that do intense exercise even for 10 minutes, where your heart rate goes 70% of your maximum. Then do the rest. For the 30, you have to do 30 minutes at least five days a week, that is 150 minutes in a week. But if you don't do that, but if you do that, sorry, and you then sit on the couch or on your desk and not move, not going to help you. Third is what? Stress. Now here I would like to talk about acute stress, acute stress, chronic stress. And I always like to tell people a stress situation is like a sympathetic nervous system, parasympathetic nervous system. Very simple. Just say sympathetic nervous system is your you're putting your uh, foot on the gas pedal. You are about to be somebody snatching your purse. Your blood pressure increases. Your heart rate increases. Your, your breathing increases. And everything is in a fight or flight mode. That goes off. Your foot is on the brakes. Parasympathetic. Blood pressure comes down. Everything is normal. Heart rate goes down. But if your sympathetic continues... Every so often, then you get into chronic stress. That is when your cortisone levels rise. 
And if your cortisone level rise, what happens? Your yeah. appetite increases. You have, see people who are in prednisone and the appetite increases. They start eating more. Now comes obesity and all its followers of blood pressure, diabetes, sleep apnea, and what have you. So the whole point is that chronic stress is a bigger problem than your acute stress. Acute stress is helpful. But when you go into the chronic stress, that's a problem. Again, sleep. I really don't believe that people should have seven to nine hours, even though studies are done. I believe in a restorative sleep. Sometimes I've slept for five hours and I feel great. Sometimes I sleep for nine to 10 hours and I feel lousy when I get up in the morning. It should be restorative. Restorative is, you know, your rapid eye movement and your non-rapid eye movement. Your non-rapid eye movement is the important part of sleep. That is when your body is repairing itself. Your cells are repairing. Your blood pressure is going down. Everything is going down. If you are disturbed from that sleep, you really get angry. Because that's a sleep that everything is slowly going down. That is an important part of sleep. And after sleep comes what? Social support. It's better to give support than receive support in, in so many cases. And if you have a good social this thing around you, it helps. What happened to those uh, blue zones that people lived 100 years? The blue zones? Uh, yeah, they, they study uh, about that. People in different parts of the world. The social support was a big issue over there because they had a great social support network. And then finally, avoiding of substances, abusive substances, smoking, uh, your, uh, uh, you know, uh, prescribed drugs or legal or illegal drugs, cocaine or amphetamines or uh, even pain medications, all these. And finally, alcohol. Now, here I've got to stop for alcohol. Alcohol was taught beginning raising HDL, drink responsibly. No. If you are drinking alcohol for health reason, no, you're not justifying. It does no good for health reason. If you are doing socially and responsibly, I am not judgmental to that because I myself drink socially. Now, would a person, would I tell a person to start if he's not drinking for health reasons? Definitely no. But if somebody turns around and says, look, I feel great. I am relaxed. I listen to my own music. I do my own things. And I'm responsible maybe once or twice in a week. I have no problems. But then again, this is me. This is coming from me. Yeah. So I'm glad that you talked about the pillars of health because so often people adopt a whole food plant-based lifestyle and they may not see the results that they were looking for. And they think, ah, this is not right. This diet isn't the right way to go about it. But they didn't think about the other pillars of health, which are very important. And so I'm glad that you brought those up because you can't just change your diet and expect a miracle to happen. I think that, yes, if you did change your diet to the whole food plant-based lifestyle, that you would definitely see improvements in many areas of your health. But to really get the, the whole benefit going with the other pillars of health that you described is just so important. And you, you even talked about meditation too, right? Because we were yes. talking, so many people think about meditation. They say, I can't twist my legs into a pretzel and do ohms and empty my monkey brain because I can't do it. I'm one of those people. I can't, I can't sit and think about nothing. You know, that's not, that's not me. So I, I'm kind of on the p same page you are with meditation. So talk about, because yes, you can do that kind of meditation, but if that's not your thing, there's other ways to go around it, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, we are piece of the same part, you know, because yeah. I have a problem with meditation too. I've said it in so many of my lectures. My wife is an expert at it. I wouldn't say expert, but she can get into the now. Uh, for me, it is all 
ideas I'm thinking and then I'm trying to stop. That's the wrong thing to do is to let it come, not try to stop it. So my point is that anything that can get your mind at rest. See, when I was climbing Mount Kailas in Tibet, I was not only going upwards. I was not only going forwards, I was going inwards. It was something that was there, the surrounding that made me feel calm. So when we reached the 19,000, everybody was high-fiving, but I wanted to be alone. I wanted to sit and think, is what is all this? Can I do without all this wealth, things that are material things? Can I do that? Because after all, what is it? That feeling is the feeling of now, your mindset. So if you can get it out of religion, if you can get it out of spirituality, if you can get it out of meditation, if you can get it out of yoga, if you can get it out of music, anything that can make you peaceful and in the now, that helps you. So, so the whole, whole idea is the stress thing also. When we talk about meditation, I would like people to try a little bit who are difficult in meditation like I am, do a little bit of sky breathing. Sky breathing is pranayama. And sky breathing is something which you do, you can Google it. It helps the pulmonary reserve. A lot of people got benefit during the COVID period and the lungs were going. It helps to relax your body because you're actually taking a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And you're going on doing it for eight times in several postures. And it that is one thing that has helped me. And I would like people to do the sky breathing. Just Google and you will get it. So it, it can lower your blood pressure. It can lower your stressors. It can lower stress-related diseases like your fibromyalgia, psychosomatic, your chronic fatigue syndrome, your migraines. These doctors don't know irritable bowel syndrome. It's a diagnosis of exclusion and they can't find out what was wrong with you. They say, okay, now you've got irritable bowel syndrome. But all these can be helped by meditation, by yoga, by anything. And I don't mean just meditation sitting in one place with cross legs and you know, doing. The idea is to be in the now. So that is regarding the meditation and the yoga. And, and I think people should do that much before they land up and start taking antidepressant pills and all that. And there is a place. There is a place for that. But try this. Even if you take pills, try this. You may have to lower your pills. Yes. And that's the one thing I wanted, because you're a physician, if you can tell everybody quickly about if they are on blood pressure medications or if they are on diabetes medications and they do adopt this lifestyle, it can be dangerous, right? Absolutely. So, Tell them about that. And not, not in a bad way. Not dangerous in a bad way, but I just want to get everybody's attention. <laughs> no, 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 no. You can have any problem, any health condition, and you, there is no, nothing that says you cannot do plant-based diet. You can have high blood pressure, heart disease, stroke, cancer, whatever it is, you can still do plant-based diet. But the problem is you got to let your doctor know because your blood pressures will come down fast and there is a problem because once your blood pressure comes down, even with medications, we don't try to bring the blood pressure down very fast, blood pressure, because the reason is that it can cause strokes, clots. So because you're bringing it down too fast. So let your doctors know about it that you are on a plant-based diet, so monitor your blood pressure more, 
monitor your blood sugars more, your blood sugars are going to go. They may bottom. Because you can cure type 2 diabetes with 21 day of a whole food plant-based diet. So be careful about these things. Even your, uh, your uh, cholesterol will come down. Now, so the whole idea is let your doctors know you continue your plant-based diet and see. I'm sure your doctor will say, what's wrong? Why is your blood pressure now normal? Then you got to, in some ways, we all, doctors are great. I have great doctors around me, people who saved a lot of lives. Include, but the idea is we need sometimes to educate our doctors too. That look, my blood pressure is down. Can I take half the tablet? Can I stop taking the tablet and can you watch? Because it can be dangerous. Right. Because you could become over-medicated, which is, I mean, it's a wonderful thing. That's how quickly and how effective this lifestyle is. That if you're on these medications, you could become dangerously over-medicated. You want to consult your doctor. Let him know. Monitor at home your blood pressure. Monitor your blood sugars if, if you're on medications for these things. Because the doctor, under the doctor's supervision, you can titrate down right? You don't want to do it on your own. True, true. And that is why, you know, you can get in hypotensive blessing or you can get into hypoglycemia for diabetes, hypotension as far as blood pressures are concerned. But uh, it is nice to let your doctors know before uh, you start on a whole plant-based diet. You are yeah, absolutely I right. Yeah, that's what my husband did. He well, he wasn't he didn't have diabetes, but he he was had the hypertension, blood pressure medications, and six times a day he had a little at home monitor that he and then he after a week, well actually it was after a couple of days he noticed a trend going downward. So he contacted his doctor and he showed him the the journal that he was keeping and showing the downward trend, and the doctor worked with him and helped him titrate down. So it's. It's a wonderful thing. It really is to think that you can get off of these medications. I want your uh, listeners to know one thing because it has happened to me about two weeks back. I don't, but I'm a very open person. I uh, say things so that others can learn. So let me tell you one thing. Two weeks back, I was found out to have the little LPA, lipoprotein A, very high. Now, I've got a conduction defect in my heart that is separate from coronary artery disease. It's a funny, fancy word, Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. Then I've got stents. Then I've got bypass surgery. Now I have the little lipoprotein, lipoprotein A, little LPA. This is will not let your bad cholesterol, LDL, go down and your cholesterol will always remain high. See, you produce cholesterol, your body does produce cholesterol for various things, for your hormones and other things, nutrients, your body produces cholesterol. But you don't need any outside cholesterol. But in some cases like us, we make a lot of this cholesterol and then we have this little LPA, which is like a Velcro, which attaches on the bad cholesterol and forms the problem of uh, sludging of the blood and more chances of getting atherosclerosis. Now I found this two weeks back. Am I going to stop my whole food plant-based diet? No. It's probably the whole food plant-based diet is keeping me alive. So we are looking at it. There are a lot of newer things that have been found in cardiology. And one of them is about this, that they, they don't, there is no treatment. This is genetics. I've just got it down from my genes. Maybe I should have sued my parents. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but it is genetics. So I am. I'm, I know I'm discussing with them. I'm even 
going to uh, as far as possible, as far as London. I'm not going there, but I've talked to doctors. And in future, there may be something. But right now, I have to bring that uh, cholesterol down. So it is that shots that they give, Ripatha, every three months or so. But that is right. it. Yeah. I wanted people to understand, as a doctor, I am also not infallible. I am there with you all. Yes. And, and like you said, that you as, as, a, as a mammal, right, we're humans, but also animals. All animals produce cholesterol, right? So, and it's needed, it's necessary for life. But why would you want to eat more cholesterol? Why would you want to eat the animals that are also, because when you're eating those animals in the, in the animal foods, you're eating their cholesterol, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So no outside cholesterol period. You know mm -hmm. that Rip Esselstyn said once that a cup of milk has the same saturated fat and cholesterol as an ounce of meat. So I call milk the liquid meat. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you have just given us so many pearls of wisdom today. Thank you, Dr. Tayer. I mean, helping us to learn about preventing and reversing heart disease, but not just that. I mean, you talked about erectile dysfunction and diabetes. You talked about so many things. And we've learned that a whole food plant-based lifestyle, that that is truly the way to go. And then also including the other pillars of health. I wanted to let everybody know that we did talk a little bit about your book, which I have right here, and it's called Open Heart. It's a wonderful book. I got to read some of it, but I'm going to be finishing it up. And you are so generously offering a copy of this book for our book giveaway. I am so excited. So Green Warriors, we're going to be having in the show notes a way for you to learn about how you can enter to win this book from Dr. Tayer. So I thank you so much. And I encourage everyone to go on Amazon and check it out or your local bookstore, because it's going to give you more details about his journey to health and all the things that you can be inspired by, because that's the thing, right? It's never too late. Is that right? Sure. True. Uh, old age is not a limiting factor for changing one's lifestyle. People have done it older than I am. People have done it younger than I am. So it is not a limiting factor. Yes. Well, everyone, and, please uh, go ahead. Go, no, I was just saying that the book itself, uh, it, it, it is also, if people who have not uh, liked uh, my voice for any reason, you can be uh, uh, pardoned. But if you like, there's an audible version in my own voice for this book. That's wonderful. Because that's so important to, to hear it from the person that actually experienced it. Yeah. And some people do like the audible version so that they can do what they need to do around the house or, or when they're traveling so they can listen to a great book at the same time. So that's another option. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Taylor, please I wanted, I was going to say if everybody can click like to show their appreciation, that's how we applaud on on the internet. Click like for Dr. Tayer. And please tell us how we can find you and what you do and, and anything else that you want to talk about that people can benefit from. You see, I'm on akiltayer.com, and that is my website. I am on Facebook. I am on uh, Instagram. Uh, on YouTube, you will see a lot of my uh, podcasts. And uh, I uh, am also doing a monthly uh, Doctor's Corner shows that are totally free. And I take a chronic subject like uh, women's heart disease or erectile dysfunction or hypertension and I talk about it in a very, very basic level so that people can understand, not only understand, but understand what to ask their doctors. So I do that too. And, and then, of course, uh, I 
would like people to listen to your shows and uh, carry on because you have some great people coming on your shows. And I am truly, I've watched uh, several of your shows, which time would have permitted me to watch more. But then again, there are uh, people like uh, Physicians for Responsible Medicine, uh, Committee for Responsible Medicine with Dr. Neil Bernard is there. They're doing tremendous amount of work to change the college, uh, the school, medical school curriculum to get nutrition involved in it. Because as a doctor in my time in 70s, I had zero hours of nutrition. My son is a doctor in Atlanta. He had 20 hours in five years. So the and idea is- talking about what we're talking about. <laughs> you know, you know, and so uh, I, I feel bad, but that was the way it was. I had to treat the, uh, the, the consequence of the disease. That is what I was taught. For the longest period of a time in my time, and I, I passed out in 74, I'm 75 years today. I passed out in 1974. And uh, I, nobody ever knew that women had heart disease. Yeah. So... Yeah. We were all uh, relying on men's having autism. Women died till 1984 when Barbara Streisand, in her movie, she brought out the what syndrome it is. So that was a time when they realized that women are also dying, but mm. they're not aware of it because all the research was done on men. Wow. Well, we have a, a last minute question from Sky oh, Love. Yeah. Because she said, I have WPW2. And she said, yeah, because she said it was very rare. And she wanted to know, because um, she said she never met anybody with that. And she wanted to know if you um, had surgery for, for it. I guess she's thinking that maybe you might have some insight. No, uh, I don't know. Uh, are you a, a medical person or not? But if you're not, then let me tell you that my Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome was, uh, you know, you get those delta waves and all that. Let's not get into that. But mine was with a slow ventricular response that my heart rate was always very low in the 50s. And then I went over at that time, I was in the Middle East with the American University of Beirut. And then I went to London and they asked me to be put on a medication, Rithmon, which I could not take. And therefore I gave that up. And then I just let it be. And it has never bothered me. It has never gone rapid or anything like that. And as you grow older, uh, you, your, your tract sort of obliterates by itself. And therefore, you, your rhythm becomes more regular. But your heart rate will always remain slow. So even before I was an athlete, my heart rate was slow. But uh, there are addition done if it is bothering you. And it is very, very simple. Wow. Yeah. Sky Love said no, but WPW diagnosis at 23. And I'm 57 now. Okay. So, wow. Well, I'm glad that you're able to, to speak know. to that. Good to know. Good to yeah. know. Anybody yeah. has any questions, please feel free. I have no problems answering. If I don't know, we can both look up. And yeah. Get to you. That's, that's wonderful that you're so uh, accessible. And on a lighter note, Angela Fischetti said, happy birthday to Dr. Tayer. Is, is today your birthday? No, it's, it was in, in March. It was in March, but I it's love it. The, the <laughs> energy too. she excludes, excludes is unbelievable. Zeus yes. is absolutely unbelievable. And yes. she, I, I believe every older person over the age of 55, 60 should join her classes. Yes, and she does classes on our show also. And oh, really? they're wonderful. Yes, she does. Yes, they're, they're fabulous classes because people can at any level can do them. Beginner to advanced. She makes all those modifications for people. So it's is been, she coming to uh, Cleveland? I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to find out if she's coming yeah. to Cleveland. <laughs> 
But you are. I know that. I know. Vilin told me that you are coming to Cleveland. Yes. If, for those of you that don't know what we're discussing, the National oh, Health sorry. Association is having a gathering. It's their 75th anniversary. Uh, and there, it's a plant-based gathering. And it's in Cleveland coming up in a couple of weeks. And I'm excited because so many people that I've interviewed on the show, including Dr. Tay, are going to be there. So now I'm going to actually get to meet them in person, which is, oh, it's such a thrill. But they'll also have a lot of wonderful speakers there as well. So it's, a, oh, Angela said no. Well, maybe next time. <laughs> well, I really appreciate you, Dr. Tay, for, for spending the time with us. And Green Warriors answer this question in the comments. Tell us what, what are you going to remember? Because there were so many takeaways today, right? So maybe you can type in the comments, what was your takeaway? One of my takeaways was learning about what Dr. Terry talks about as meditation in motion, that you don't have to sit still to meditate, but it is an important pillar of, of good health and a healthy lifestyle. And I want to also thank Just Taz Voice because she did the promos and she did the countdown and she really helped so much in helping us with the show and getting the word out. Just Taz Voice, who's coming up next? Somebody that Dr. Tayer knows. Today's typical diet plans simply do not work. Sid Notter will teach the basic rules for sustainable weight loss and how you can overcome the three biggest food mistakes which sabotage our efforts on Wednesday, June 7th, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific on Be Green with Amy Live. And I do want to thank you, Green Warriors, because you're here and, that, and, and that's why Dr. Ter came on to speak to all of you. And that's why I'm here, because you're helping me get the word out by watching and listening and sharing and liking and commenting. And as a special thank you, I'm offering you five free recipes. And all you have to do is go to my website, begreenwithamy.com slash join. And I'm going to send you five free recipes as a special thank you to all of you. And you'll get to see some of the fun things that I can do now that I couldn't do when I was younger because of this lifestyle. And so I really wanted to share that with you. And all of you, take your right hand and grab your left shoulder and take your left hand and grab your right shoulder. Now squeeze. That's a hug from me to you. And if you'd like to go along with me and Dr. Tayer, he's going to join me with my tagline. And you can type it in the sh comments if you like to join us. Are you ready, Dr. Tayer? Yes. All right. Until I see all of you again, be strong, be well, and be green. green. <laughs> Thanks, Dr. Tayer. Bye-bye, everyone. Thanks, Green Warriors. Bye. Now you can listen to Be Green with Amy expert interviews wherever you go. Listen while walking, meal prepping, or traveling. Find Be Green with Amy on Apple, Google, Alexa, Amazon, or virtually anywhere you find podcasts. Be strong, be well, and 